everyone, and welcome to another new video. As you're probably aware, 2021 is Amtrak's 50th anniversary. To celebrate, they decided to paint up several locomotives in special commemorative paint schemes, including one of the brand new Siemens Mobility ALC42 locomotives that are currently under construction in Sacramento. I was asked to take some photos of Locomotive 301 in what Amtrak is calling the Day 1 livery following its completion a few weeks ago, so let's head back down one more time for a surprise visit to Siemens Mobility to see completed locomotive number 301. We're back at the Siemens Mobility Rail Equipment Manufacturing Plant located on French Road in the Sacramento suburb of Florin. You may remember during our previous visit that Locomotive 301 was fully assembled but still awaiting final decal work. When I arrived early in the morning, the locomotive was in the process of being moved to the north side of the facility. Siemens Mobility has two of these custom-built rail equipment transporter vehicles that they informally refer to as Shirley's, which is the name of the company that builds these machines. The Shirley, with 301 on board, was carefully maneuvered into position over one of the tracks at the north end of the facility and lowered to the ground. The 301 was slowly backed down the ramp by use of a cable. For the final gap from the Shirley back onto the rails, 301 was fired up and moved under its own power. With 301 back on the rails, the Shirley rolled out of the way to go transport locomotives and cars around other parts of the facility. Still under its own power, 301 moved forward into the bright morning sunlight. The sharp, yet simple, day one scheme shone vibrantly. The 301 was one of six locomotives selected to receive special paint schemes for Amtrak's 50th anniversary. Of those, it was the only ALC42 chosen with the other five schemes being applied to General Electric P42 locomotives. The Day 1 scheme is quite arguably the most significant out of the six because it is a recreation of the very first locomotive to be painted and lettered for Amtrak. As the story goes, back in April of 1971, a final paint scheme had not yet been chosen for Amtrak equipment prior to the company's first day of operation on May 1st of that year. In an effort to have a locomotive that could be used for a startup day press event, one of the locomotives Amtrak had inherited from a predecessor railroad was given a quick paint job. Locomotive 4316, a former Penn Central E8 type, was the one chosen to receive the scheme. At the time, most of the Penn Central's passenger equipment was painted in a very simple all-black scheme with Penn Central lettering. Amtrak adapted this livery to feature the iconic Amtrak Arrow logo, which was wrapped around the nose of the locomotive. And thus, the Day One livery was born. The original E8 locomotive kept its unique scheme for a little more than a year before receiving the Phase One paint scheme and a new number in 1972. Now complete with finished decal work, the state-of-the-art 301 proudly displayed a recreation of the Day One livery. In a way, it is symbolic of Amtrak's perseverance from an uncertain beginning across 50 years of growth to a bright, brand new era in passenger railroading with the approach of complete fleet modernization. The finished product was an impressive sight. 
In adapting this paint scheme for the ALC-42, a few small modifications were made, such as the striping on the nose of the locomotive. This was done to make way for Amtrak's Travel Mark logo on the front of the unit. To complement this, the classic Amtrak arrow was added to the rear of the locomotive. The Amtrak 50th celebratory emblem adorned each side of the 301 directly behind the cab. In other parts of the plant, work was progressing rapidly on several other new Charger locomotives. At the time of my visit, Locomotive 303 was receiving some final touches in the final assembly building before being outshopped and sent over to the testing department. Locomotive 305 was also nearing completion, just needing its nose piece and trucks. Several roof panels and nose pieces were awaiting installation on locomotives 305, 6, 7, and 8. 301 would undergo additional inspection and some final tweaking. Following this, the locomotive would at last be ready for shipment back east to Washington, D.C. On the evening of July 16th, we are back in Florin on a side road to the west of the Siemens Mobility Factory. Many rail vehicles can be seen in various stages of completion, including a number of light rail vehicles and charger locomotives. 301 was sitting at the north end of the facility behind a row of Sound Transit light rail vehicles waiting to be picked up by Amtrak. Shortly after 6 p.m., Amtrak Special Move number 961 approached the plant. In the lead was P42DC number 126, followed by a Superliner coach, and then P42 number 7. The gates were swung open and the short train rolled into the factory to pick up the 301. After about an hour, Locomotive 7 slowly brought the train back out of the facility with number 301 in tow. Now running as Amtrak train number 960, the special move came to a stop just short of the main line. The reason why soon became evident as a high priority Union Pacific intermodal train came flying by heading south. At 8 p.m. on the nose, the train departed Florin en route for Oakland.
After a quick and uneventful trip west, 301 was placed into the consist of the California Zephyr for the next day's journey eastbound. The morning of Saturday, July 17th found the sun shining bright over the East Bay as the morning marine layer of clouds lifted. It may be summer in California, but in this part of the state, mornings can be on the cool side any time of year as evidenced by the morning's low 60s temperatures. This is a location known as Hercules, a spot immediately adjacent to Pinole. This area has become a bedroom community for the San Francisco Bay Area in recent years, with several new housing developments popping up right next to the tracks within the last two decades. In the distance to the north, the Highway 37 bridge to Mare Island could be seen. A little after 9.30 a.m., the California Zephyr came through with Locomotive 301 tucked in behind the two P-42 units in charge of the train. In another 15 minutes, the train would make its next stop in Martinez. Moving ahead to Davis, the California Zephyr was flying along at track speed heading for Sacramento. The cool temperatures of Hercules were quickly being replaced with some 80 degree heat. At a location known as Foothill Farms, the train passed through a shortcut as it neared the city of Roseville. Up into the Sierra Nevada mountains now, we see the California Zephyr at a location known as Dutch Flat. Once a center of activity during California's gold rush, it is now a quiet community with a population of less than 200 individuals. Large rock outcroppings greeted the train as it traversed Yuba Gap.
For the next several miles, the California Zephyr would be traveling along a narrow rock ledge high above Interstate 80 and the valley floor. Arriving into Truckee, 301 and train passed under an old signal bridge that dates back to the Southern Pacific Railroad. Truckee is another city along the route that got its start as a railroad town during the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. Today, it is a popular stopping off point for tourists traveling between Sacramento and Reno. At Verde, Nevada, we see the California Zephyr for the last time as it continued down along the Truckee River toward Reno, passing under another former Southern Pacific signal bridge. In short order, 301 and the California Zephyr would arrive in Reno, completing the first leg of their journey to Chicago. Here, the train would have a crew change before continuing across the Great Basin Desert of Nevada and Utah. Thanks for joining me for this look at the completion of Amtrak's Siemens Mobility ALC42 locomotive number 301, the special 50th anniversary day one commemorative locomotive, and once again a special thank you to Siemens Mobility and Amtrak. For more on Amtrak's 50th anniversary celebrations, visit Amtrak.com slash 50th anniversary. And likewise, if you'd like to learn more about Siemens Mobility and the rail vehicles they produce for operators in North America, go to mobility.siemens.com slash us slash en dot html. For more about the new ALC42 locomotives, take a look at my three-part series on the debut of Amtrak 300, the first ALC42, as well as the behind-the-scenes tour of the locomotive assembly process if you haven't done so. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a comment down below. For newcomers to the channel, I invite you to subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Check out my other social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, and Flickr for even more train and railroad themed content. I'll be back next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time for an all-new railroad-themed adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.